Uh, I didn't, I never did count because I didn't want it to be a personal accomplishment type of situation. We were just for South Carolina State and for all of those young men that we had on the football team. That was my, uh, that was my number. I graduated from college uh, with a degree in civil uh, engineering, believe it or not, a Bachelor of Science uh, in CE, uh, civil engineering, and then uh, going and starting out as a high school coach in lieu, of, uh, in lieu of going to the state highway department to put down roads and bridges and steel structures and hydraulics, water pressure and things like that. Uh, I was just interested in uh, coaching and, and, and helping young men develop the uh, academic, social, and athletic ability that they had within them. First of all, I was coaching at the University of Pittsburgh. I started out with Carl De Pasqua, who's a Pitt graduate, and uh, we all got fired after the Penn State game in late November, and Coach Majors had told uh, Jackie Sherrill to call me and let that let me know that I was not fired, that I still had a job. About that time, I was out recruiting uh, on Long Island, and uh, Dr. Isaac Bracey kept calling me uh, because Dr. Milton Hunter, our athletics uh, director here at South Carolina State, uh, told Dr. Bracey to keep calling until they reached me for me to come down for a visit at South Carolina State. They were interested in uh, my services as the football coach. So finally he caught, caught up with me and I came down for an interview. Um, my salary uh, at Pitt was a certain figure and I, I think I might have gotten 60%. I know I lost $8,000 in, in uh, going from an assistant coach at one school to the head coach at another school losing uh, $8,000 in the move, but it was worth it because um, sometimes you just can't equate uh, money with, with what you're trying to do in life. So 1973, I took the job, came here. So for the next uh, seven years, uh, we were off and running. Uh, some of the coaches said, well, let's show you some film. Because we, we got a guy, one guy's name is uh, Donnie Shell and another young one, his name is Harry Carson. So I, I'd split the field in half and say, Harry and Donnie, you two take this half of the field and the other nine will play the other half. And uh, they would do well on their half with just two people. As a, as a teacher, as a coach, as a person who has influence, you never know uh, what influence you're gonna have on people even down the road. And I think Coach Jesse has, uh, has had that influence uh, upon a lot of people. He really taught football. You know, sometimes you can have coaches that are not teachers, but he was a coach that was a great teacher. And I think you need that because it helps you grow as an as a, as a individual person, as a football player. Uh, and that's where our experience under him and all his coaches was like that, all his assistant coaches. Um, was uh, Had won championships in high school and came from a uh, um, you know, successful program. He's the first African-American in Division I A ball uh, to be a head coach. Uh, he set a great example, and uh, matter of fact, um, at, at my golf tournament uh, to raise money for uh, my scholarship, uh, Tony Dungeon spoke last year, and uh, he always mentioned that Coach Jeffries was uh, uh, really uh, was the inspiration to him, uh, and, and how uh, he set the, opened the door for African-American coaches in Division I A ball. I went to Wichita State, and you know, it is very tough to pull your family up in January. And I was gonna turn it down. I was in a comfort zone here, but then I thought about it. Someone has to open the door. You know, they talk about a, the glass ceiling on certain in certain professions, but uh, we have to be willing to go and, and take a chance on it. So to move up, uh, to just play those type schools, um, it would be a, an advancement for an African-American coach to, to be the head coach in that arena. What stands out to me was our victory over KU. Uh, that, that just made it all worth it the five years I was at 
uh, Wichita State for the fans. They just said that's enough to last them for the next 50 years. Well, I think one of the things that uh, sometimes people lose sight of when uh, someone has such a legacy as his with all the stats and so forth, they lose sight of what the individual is contributing as a human being. And I think what he contributes is a sense of dignity and, uh, uh, to, the, to the university. I think he um, elevates you know, the sense of what the university is all about with the students, with other individuals, with coaches, with people in the, in the Orangeburg community, as well as the state and the nation at large. I was fortunate enough to uh, play three years uh, for him. And after uh, leaving him, he was very inspirational in getting me started uh, in officiating. With the background he gave us, I went on to be a vice president at a utility of corporate services. And all the things they can play. All the things we learned from him about being a good disciplinarian gives credit to him and what he did in the community around us. He showed us every day in the way he carried himself. A coach's responsibility uh, is to uh, develop the academic, social, and athletic ability of a player in that order. And the great gratification a coach gets is when they come back and say, Coach, I love you. you got me through school and, and, and we talk about football last.